What's up Sim Races? This is Larry TJR Sim here and today I want to give you my review, my thoughts on the D-Box Gen 5 4250i. Before we get started, I do have a bunch of affiliate links in the description. If you're interested in buying some Sim gear, it would really appreciate I really appreciate that. It helps out the channel grow, helps me be able to afford to buy more products that I can review and give you my thoughts and opinions on it whether it's a good decision for you to buy ahead of time. So, with that, let's get started. All right, so I wanted to go over so uh, my thoughts on this before we jump into the details and stuff, but I will have, uh, I already have an unboxing, so I'll just leave a link to the unboxing. You can go check that out. No sense in making this video longer with that. Uh, pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to see, but you of course see how it comes, comes out in a package. So uh, yeah, check out that. It's somewhere. But I want to give you my thoughts on motion, right? So, and then also, uh, before we get started, I guess I'll give you the disclaimer as well. Uh, I purchased this with my own money. Uh, no one's influenced my decision. It's all me. So, <laughs> it's a small channel, so it's all me, all right? A growing channel. <laughs> all right. So, anyway, uh, my thoughts on motion. So, I would challenge you. Some people kind of wonder, is motion even worth it? Uh, do you want to spend the money on motion and uh, uh, feel that extra immersion factor? To me, motion is all about immersion. Now, I had a next level race in V3. I uh, really enjoyed it. It was a 2 DOF. It's $3,000 for this that system. It's quite expensive for what it was, but it worked really well, uh, and more so the software was really good uh, on that system. So, And actually, I see other uh, systems, 4 DOF systems, uh, that are actually using that same uh, type of so or that same software from that company as well. Not Next Level Racing, but the people that make the Next Level Racing uh, motion rigs. I forget the name of them. But anyway, um, yeah, I really like that software. So uh, the D-Box has, of course, completely different software. It works fine. Uh, not, not the best. But uh, to get started, when you, when you think about motion, whether it's really right for you, um, is really is really a uh, fancy wheel right for you? Uh, is a direct drive right for you? Those are all decisions you made along your journey, right? And um, so why you buy direct drive wheels is you wanna feel more immersed in the experience. You wanna feel the edge of grip when you're in a long bending curve and when you feel the front end slide out or the back slide out or just at the edge of grip and where you can just lift off the throttle just slightly to bring it back in and turn correctly all these little nuances right you want to feel the bumps rumble strips and stuff no big deal everybody can do that now uh except really g25 doesn't do very well but you know, all the mainstream uh direct drive any direct drive wheel can do this well so that goes into motion as well right so motion is just another layer of immersion so i, I would challenge you and i did this myself as well as when you're driving down the road in your vehicle and you're holding the steering wheel notice how your body actually moves uh, when you're in the car when you're you're sitting in a car going 60 miles an hour down the road or 20 or 30 whatever the speed limit is at the time we all don't speed <laughs> but uh notice how your body's mo you're moving you'll notice that you're constantly moving you're just always moving now i drive a bronco so it's a little bit rougher than than some but even when i had smoother cars even if i rode in my grandma's cadillac super smooth you don't really feel any jolts in your steering wheel it almost feels like you don't have a steering wheel right it's, it's so smooth but you will and you don't feel too much of a suspension nuance because it absorbs it all but you still are moving in the car up and down in a up and down uh, motion right and then when you turn you know your body leans one way or the other inherently right this is all happens this is exactly what the motion simulation does it is replicating what you feel in the real world uh, as you would be driving on your virtual track, right? Uh, the only thing it doesn't do is G-forces. None of these do G-forces. Who knows if they ever will do G-forces? Sustained G-forces, that is. It does have the initial G-force up to 1G. Uh, I won't go over all the specs in the D-Box. Everybody can read that on the site. So, uh, But you know, you'll feel that sustained jolt, and you'll feel the jolts of the shifts, and... and uh, and then the sway and stuff, that initial G-force, right? And the initial bumps as you're going crest in a hill and, and then you feel the suspension kind of float and then compact, compact over like a, a crest, like a jump, say in WRC and stuff. So you feel all the same th things in the real world. So you should naturally would evolve to want to feel this in a simulation as well. Now, 
Does it make it faster? Does it make it slower? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's up to you, really. I think you can make this like a roller coaster and you will be so disoriented from your steering wheel that it, it won't help you at all. But if you set the motion to something reasonable of what you would actually feel going down the road uh, in a real car, uh, it, it's very immersive and it, it gives you a lot of clues of what's going on with your car. Uh, so you no longer do you have to really depend on, say, your direct drive wheel picking up every nuance through the wheel because really a, a steering wheel in a real car doesn't really pick up these little nuances. You know, you feel the road texture, you know, in it when you're turning and your, your tires are going across surfaces and stuff. You feel when it gets light with gravel, blah, 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 right? But you don't feel every little, little nuance like they try to produce in a direct drive wheel. However, the motion rig, the seat of the pants, you feel that you feel it more uh, in, the, in that regard because this is what you would feel in your car now of course this is a solid solid seat right but you're also driving gt3 cars gt4 uh, race cars in a, in a simulation as well as road cars road cars you would feel more dampened right as well but uh, these the d-box software seems to understand road cars versus race cars and the suspension effect will be dampened as well and not quite as jarring right so something to consider but anyway that's my challenge to you before you decide to get a motion rig uh, think about how you are moving in your own vehicle going down the car if you want to replicate that in a simulation the motion is the way to go i wouldn't recommend anymore a 2 dof obviously i evolved to a 4 dof my next level racing v3 broke after three years so i definitely would not ever recommend that system anymore because it only lasts three years it's a thousand dollars a year uh, for me uh, but uh, I would go to a 4 DOF. I think a 4 DOF having that extra, uh, uh, so you have your, your motion forward and backwards, left, right, and then up and down. Adding that up and down is, is just number one. It's, it's very good, very immersive, and it ties it all in, in really well. Now, I would love to have the back end sliding and the front end sliding, like the Next Level Racing uh, motion platform they have. Uh, something like that would be really cool. So a 5DOF or 6DOF uh, would be really neat as far as that goes. But I don't have it and the software in this one seems to work and fools my brain enough to not really care so much. But you can evolve the system into something like that as well. So, the, uh, But we'll get into that uh, uh, later. So maybe. We'll see. Alright, so let's get into the nitty gritty of it. Hold on. All right, let's get on with the hardware here. This is actually pretty easy. I'll run some B, B footage of showing you how to actually hook the hardware up uh, as far as the uh, D-Box actuators to the little mounting brackets. Just a quick little short clip I'll show up here on the video as well. Super simple. I do recommend that you buy this from a, uh, a retailer that sells their own. I think it's a lot more robust using something like uh, Advanced Sim Racing has theirs, which you can buy their brackets at several different sites, but also from them themselves. Track Racer has their own too. Actually, I like Track Racers uh, a little better because it will actually keep your system a little bit lower to the ground from where it mounts to your to your 8020. Check them out. Uh, but it will allow your system to set a little lower, which means that you can get your monitors up to you a little bit closer because you got to allow room for your rig to raise up and down, right? So depending on what kind of a uh, direct drive wheel or wheelbase you have, whether you're, you're trying to have it underneath your monitors or not. So something to consider. So uh, you could buy anywhere, but Track Racer obviously has a really good setup uh, as far as their brackets go. But Event Sim Racing, no problem with those. Yeah, this is how it goes. So I have the uh, ASR brackets. You'll actually only see the logo on one side and then the other, but very easy. Simple design has some uh, M5 bolts there. Actually, you, you need two wrenches. You need an M5 and an M6. But I would add some thread locker, blue 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 thread lockers. What well, I'm going to add to these as well. But I just put it on here just for demonstration purposes. But uh, you know, this is going to go on the back. Now these are not really labeled. Like I know uh, on which one where which one goes. So they're all the same actuator so it really didn't matter if this is labeled you know, colored in onto a, a certain spot like this has to be the left right or, or or anything like that but when you go to plug them up with the data cable that's very important get correct when you plug in this rj45 data cable into that control box that you hook up 
in order as it has in the instructions. So just a little FYI. Now, a pretty cool thing about the Sim Labs is if you're like me and you, you bought the, the legs, the extended legs here, I was curious if I'm gonna have to really use a jack. So I use these little carpet sliders, which is awesome because you can just slide this thing around pretty easy, even though it's a, a really heavy unit. But with that, you can see that it keeps it up off the floor enough to where I can install the uh, unit, right? The D-Box in there. What I'll end up doing is uh, loosening up the T-nuts here, slide this forward, and install my G5, of course, in that same spot there, right? Underneath it. So yeah, I just wanted to give a little uh, little bit of a assembly video. I'll add some more if I find out any any problems with things. But yeah, it's pre pretty straightforward. Hook these up into the uh, D-Box with the provided screws. Grab four of your T-nuts. And of course your longer side A cap screws, the M6s in this case. And uh, yeah, and then you'll of course screw it in from the bottom, hold it in place. But the nice thing again, like I said, is this holds it up off the ground high enough that I can slide this all back with the sliders real easy. And then uh, lower them down into the pucks so I don't even have to use a, uh, a jack or anything. So that's gonna be pretty cool. And then of course I'll remove them afterwards. So, all right. Let's get on with it. All right, so I wanted to give a quick tip. Since, you know, you can't really see underneath your rig too well if you're not going to jack it up high to where you can look underneath it, you just kind of have to play with feel with putting your, uh, your T-nuts underneath there. Of course, I would put the threaded in on this side and, of course, the other threaded in pointing inwards, right? Because when you go to slide this on the rail, when you pretty much slide it to there, you're at the hole <laughs> on the other side. So same, same with this side. Uh, so then you can easily uh, trace it with the with the nut, put it in correctly. So yeah, I suggest putting these on first, leave them a little loose so you can slide them around. And as you see there, I was able to slide that around too. And then you can come over here and slide your actuator in place and then install your, your other screws, right? So yeah. Easy peasy lemon squeezies. Just a little tip. All right. All right. So come, go to the D box website here. Uh, first off, before you even get it, while you're waiting for it in the mail, and do some research, right? Uh, bring some, uh, learn how all this is going to go to. So uh, you go over here to, oh, I'm going to see, software and downloads. We'll do that when we get to the software section. But right now, documents and videos. And you'll see uh, right here, D-Box Plus. This will actually go to the forums, which is very handy, but we'll get to that later. You won't really need it at this stage. But if you zoom on down here or scroll on down here, you'll see, uh, where is it? D-Box System Configuration Document right here. Click on that, download this one here, read through the whole thing. But also first step here, actually setting up the hardware, is you can go down to where it says D-Box System Configuration configurator click on that one and it'll download oh sorry not that one go back haptics oh g5 haptic system documentation sorry that one download this one right here which actually you'll see both of them that you need here in this guide or you can just go to the uh, uh, link here, here that i have up here on the top of the screen go to it directly to hit it do a screenshot type that in and go but these two you'll want to read through and become uh familiar with right so, because you want to hook all this up correctly the one time instead of having to troubleshoot. So, uh, I've went through a lot of different guides, YouTube, uh, Sim Racing Garage, Podium One. Dan Suzuka probably has the best one for the uh, that helped me out more with the software side of things. Uh, P1 Racing was a little bit uh, behind in times as far as the software setup. And then uh, Sim Racing Garage, I love his channel, but uh, it, it's, it's too old. The information is too old as far as a uh, software guide set up. So, but it still gets you in the ballpark, right? But you, their stuff is kind of confusing when it comes to the software side and it really doesn't have to be, but it is. But okay, this one here for the hardware, since we're talking about the hardware right now, I uh, zoom back down a little bit for you. Uh, what comes in the package, obviously I have everything hooked up, so I won't pull it out here and show you by hand, but you saw the unboxing. Hopefully, but you got your haptic bridge, uh, all your contents, right? Your USB cable, power cable, your nuts, uh, which I actually just double-sided sticky typed uh, this D-Box uh, control box. They call it haptic bridge to my uh, unit. Uh, of course, you got the actuators themselves. 
these plug lock inserts really cool because consider that your system's gonna be moving a lot your cables whether you tie them up and keep them nice and secure from moving around I suggest you do that instead of having them dangling underneath your rig and and uh, uh, possibly coming unconnected eventually uh, but these little inserts actually attach to um, uh, your, your plugs right so it fills that gap in so it stays nice and tight when you plug them in so I, I do suggest that you you do that as well I did it myself but uh, yeah works good I'm glad they're there but as you see here for the 4250i we got three power cables and two splitters so the splitters are for the uh, actuators themselves and then the um, three power cables obviously you have a power cable per splitter so what you will do is you'll plug this one end of this right here, this splitter here, into the uh, cable of your actuator, and then uh, the other one into the other actuator. Uh, so, th sorry, this this one here will go to one actuator, this one here will go to your other actuator, this one will go to this power cable right here, and then of course to the wall. Pretty simple. You do that on the left side and the right side, done. Hardware done. All right? Really simple setup as far as hardware goes, uh, so I like that. And of course, use these uh, where you can. And then you'll have uh, the other line that's coming out of your, your bridge here, your voltage, your, uh, you see here voltage selection here. It's a little bit better picture, but you'll see that you have you know, two wires. So uh, one will be your data, right? So you'll hook that one up to, uh, to your, your haptic bridge. Pretty easy. Now, uh, to keep this in mind, and then also when you install these, actually, since we're going to the hardware, uh, there is a, a certain order you want to hook. Uh, these cables up so I'll touch on it in this video and then also in the software video but uh, keep in mind uh, like I said these are the L brackets that comes with the system here and these are the cups that you'll want to use as well to protect the feet as you see here so pretty easy setup I would use uh, advanced sim racing brackets I think these are pretty cheap these little u-shaped brackets and I, I just don't trust them over the longevity it's a very thin uh, piece of metal so I think track racer or advanced sim racing really good setup there also when you're put, uh, hooking this up pay attention to your voltage 120 volt or 230 volts so if you're in america 120 if you're in eu uk 230 volts here look up what you need right and then uh, uh sit, go ahead and set this appropriately because once you have it set up on your rig it's a little bit of a pain to get to, to actually see uh where it's at so before you hook it up i suggest you click the switch to the proper proper side now when you go to hook up your uh, your data cable, the, the cable that's going to go from your, your actuator to this haptic bridge, it's important that you look at this configuration here. Uh, and, and it's going to be important for you when you get to the software side as well. But you see here this haptic bridge, A, B, C, D, pretty easy. This being the front of your rig here that I'm circling and this being the rear of your rig, a and D is your right side, and B and C is your left side of your rig. Uh, and so you want to hook up your, 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 your front right actuator to your haptic bridge A, your rear right actuator to your haptic D, and then same thing for your B and C, right, appropriately. You want to make sure you hook this up right. And you'll see later in the software where it, it'll show that you checked it off right. Uh, if you don't do this right in the beginning, you have to start all over with your software from what I understand. Uh, P1 Racing explains this uh, well uh, in this, so you can also look at their video if you just want a second hand. Look at things. I looked at all the videos online before I could uh, find it. Dan Suzuka has one for the software, which is good. I liked his. And then P1, Podium 1. Uh, they have have uh, uh, a hardware setup. Their software setup is not very relative, uh, in, in my opinion, but uh, it was confusing to me actually uh, because what I saw on screen was not what they were saying. I was seeing the Dan Suzuka's was a little bit more uh, on point. So let me see. That is, of course, you know, as you scroll down here, you can see how the uh, USB splitters are here. No big deal. Pretty easy. Again, you can see the I was saying the the data cable to your to your haptic bridge box that little small box and then of course to the to the y cable and this goes to your wall so it explains it very well very easy to hook up let's get on to the software side of things next alrighty so uh, now we're going on to the software aspect before we get to the software aspect or before we go to download that within the software there is a uh, data sheet a excel sheet that tells you what to do how to do it <laughs> 
<laughs> you wouldn't know that because when you get your your D box in the mail and you look through there, it just has that one little hard sheet, which is basically this little D. I think this is D box G five spec sheet, right? Doesn't tell you crap. So oh, it's beyond me. It blows my mind how nowadays we have YouTube videos on how to turn on a light switch. That something that's more important and, and can be complicated. They don't have these little videos how to, uh, to create, but. I digress. That's why I'm here, right? Since you've already downloaded these, right, which is fine, uh, what you really need to do is go back and download where it says DBox System Configurator Document. That's the one you need. And you click on that, and it looks like this, all right? Uh, DBox System Configurator User Guide. They're all kind of named, very similar names, right? So that's the one you need. I would go ahead and download that and read it. Uh, read it first, especially when it comes to the actual uh, software setup, which I have it right here. I will drag over here to the screen for you. But in this configurator, sorry, I skipped through that a little fast. This system configurator years ago, this is the one important thing that you're going to need. It gives you, of course, what to do, G5, even all the way down to G2, G3 systems. But you're just concerned with uh, section four, the G5. So when you get down here, um, haptic system generators and generations, you don't really need that. But when you get to here, system installation, read from here on. You're going to want this, this information. It tells you step by step what to do, but there's no instructions that lead you to this point. So it drives me nuts. But let's go ahead and, and download. I'll show you the download and install of what you need to do on, on, on this for the software. So. Like I said, we have uh, we go to the hamburger and then of course go to software uh, downloads and then we find this page here, Motion Core and System Configurator. And the reason I was mentioning this other software installation uh, guide here is because in Motion Core you will get that PDF as well. Uh, but what you need, but it doesn't tell you. <laughs> If you didn't know know about it, you could go ahead and download this and, and install it. Set it up and install it and then download this and set it up and install it and you think you're done, but you're not done. Uh, you really don't know what to do yet. You're like, okay, how come nothing's talking to each other? Uh, but in that, in that log there, it tells you what to do. So first, download Motion Core, uh, download it, run the setup exe, let it install that stuff, and, and then after you finish that, download System Configurator and set up EXE, let it run through its stuff. Have both of these download it to your PC and work it. Right? Or, you know, you'll see it in there in your apps menu, right? Have both of these installed. All right. So when you come over to your apps, click on apps, go to DBox. This is what you're going to see. So you got this DBox folder, DBox control panel, documentation, uh, haptic sync, and DBox utilities. So under the D-Box, of course, now you see, because I have games installed, you see all these games, right? Uh, which is, oops, which is fine. Oh, man, I clicked off of it. Sorry. I was trying to, bear with me. All right. Uh, you won't have these games until you start installing games, right? But what you will want to mess with first is this D-Box system configurator. And then here is your D-Box system configurator user manual. All right. So... There's my frustration with this whole setup. I don't know why they don't do this better. But anyway, open up the configurator. I'll drag it over to this screen so you can see it. And in this configurator, uh, this is what it looks like, right? But what you actually are messing with is, let me put all this in the same screen for you, is uh, this installation guide as well. Zoom up a little bit. Up oh, right there. All right. So, oops, right there. I got bezels on, so I can't go too far off to the left or to the right here. <laughs> About right there. Okay, good. All right. So I digress here. You, here's giving you the instructions: step one, step two. So step one, uh, you have this Motion Core. This is the latest version of DBox Motion Core installed, which is the very first program we installed. Before installing and running the DBox System Configurator, this is where it's telling you download and extract and the setup of the first one, Motion Core. So you have these instructions that tell you what to do after you should already 
known this. <laughs> you should already be told what to do before you download these, right? Because a lot of people can just download one, download it, and then just extract one or the other out, out of place. But you have to do the motion core first, and that's what I'm trying to stress here with you. So, all right. So, uh, you know, install the motion core, set it up, which will give you all those programs, and then you're ready to go. Uh, then you can go ahead and download and extract the second one, which is the system box configurator package, uh, which, you know, they have a little hot links here for it as well to work and download. And then you're good to go. All right. So now you're, you're getting into the actual system itself. So you got the, this uh, system configurator, as you see here for instructions. Uh, in this, you need a firmware update. Most 99% sure everybody will need a firmware update for this. But uh, what you see here is, is, and it may not look exactly like this because I have a running system, but, uh, and I can't exactly remember what all was here before, but you have this, these three tabs here. So it actually explains what those three tabs are in this, in this program here. So, or, I'm sorry, in this list, you know, list of instructions. So read through it, get familiar with it. But basically what you're doing is firmware update. You can click refresh your status like I'm doing, and it's gonna check for the latest firmware. Now generally after you have this installed it tells you when you have firmware updates and uh, it'll let you know uh, it'll come up on the screen when you launch launch the program and it'll tell you what's up so here it's seeing own refresh firmware status operation in progress please connect all your system components and it's updated so it is refresh firmware status. okay it's doing its refresh right here so it's all refreshed and it's telling me here it is updated right so uh, if you wanted to see what it was going through, you could have clicked on execution details and saw, saw it was doing its business. Over here, the second tab, so that's up to date. This is, of course, considering you hooked everything up correctly. But we'll get into that here. What I, I told you, A, B, C, D, the hookup. Here on this second configuration update, you have the hardware selection, which is your, your D box, one platform. This section here is, is uh, the configuration that's already running my system yours will most likely be blank because uh, you haven't set this up yet uh, and then in the beginning I only had one I just had this 1052 so I was totally confused on what to do uh, but it didn't ever update until I went through and did my um, firmware update which I didn't have these instructions to begin with because uh, I didn't see them in the in the pull down list right so anyway um, but what you want to do, of course, is you want to see 10774. And when you click on that, it gives you all the ports, right? So, um, and if, if you're not sure which one to click on, it doesn't hurt, right? It, you click on this, you're like, I don't know if that's the right one. Go over here to uh, actuator count. If it didn't have four, put in four. Click on roll, pitch, and heave, because that's what you're wanting. And it only gives you one selection. Boom, you're there. And then you're at the end of it, you'll want to apply applications. But here you see G, D, J, and M. D being right here, port D is M, and so on. But for us, if you remember, port A was your 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 front right, which is D on here. And then your rear right was um what was it is? It was uh well it's M in this case, which was D here. And then your, your left side was the CMB port, which is J and G in this case, right? And after you finish that, hit apply configuration, and then you're good to go. All right? And that's really, that's it. And once, it, once that's applied, you're done really with the system configurator. Uh, what you need to do now is go and test that it's actually going to work, right? So this is where you go to your, your uh, go back to the apps to show you that. Apps. You want to go to your D-Box control panel, pull up your control panel over here, drag it over here for you. Uh, if you didn't do any of that stuff right to begin with, when you get to this control panel, it'll just say defaults and then you won't see this haptic bridge. So if you see defaults and no haptic bridge right here, you didn't update your firmware. Uh, so make sure you go through this in steps. Now right here on this one, uh, all you're gonna do here is test that your system works. So you can click on test and it'll go through the motion here with us. So it's going up, as you can see me on the screen, go up and down. It'll go through the haptic. I don't know if you can hear it, but my voice is going crazy and then my mouse is moving, uh, moving around on the screen there. Back and forward, left and right. And then it goes through the haptic again. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit test again and that'll stop it all, right? But that, now you are rest assured, everything is hooked up, it's working right. 
Now, if it was going the opposite direction than what it was supposed to be, you, you have things mixed up on your box. You got them opposite. And then you'll have to go through this whole process again and uh, start over, right? Then obviously hook them up correctly and then start back over. <laughs> so, all right, so we're good here. Now you can go ahead and hit monitor uh, right here as well. And uh, I had to do this because uh, you'll see these, it lights up when you highlight over it, but if you click on it, you will get this box here. And I was doing some problem checking and, and seeing why, why am I not seeing on the actual box itself all the light green like you're supposed to, they were like yellow. And, uh, but it was because in the first unboxing, I was saying I was hooking up a auxiliary kill switch basically, and it doesn't like that. So definitely just don't even waste your time. Don't use the, uh, the stop switch. And see that went down, you see on screen it went down as well, right? Don't try using up a, a stop switch on this. I'm sure there's a way to install one. I just haven't spent the time to try to figure it out. Maybe the switch that I had wasn't um, the proper one. I had a two switch left side, right side. Obviously, you got to run them both at the same time anyway, so I just turned them on. But it didn't like it. Maybe it was dropping in voltage, and that's why. But I was having a problem with uh, these all lightening up green. Uh, but here you can check your connections here. If, as long as you got all green here, you're good to go. And these are the details of showing things like uh, your voltages and stuff like that. Nothing I'm, I'm really concerned about myself. All I care is this box is green and ready to go. So that's just, and then you test the platform again if you want to. All right, so you don't need that. I don't need that. Now you're done with this. Um, one thing I did forget, and I just rem reminded myself, uh, I just remembered again, is when you go to install these softwares, if you go back to apps, which actually would be step one, is uh well not really step one but you're it's gonna it's gonna stop you at some point and make you register uh this system so there will be a program see, where's it at dbox haptic that's what it is dbox haptic sync i'm sorry i have a shortcut on the screen here and, and like i said there's so many of these dang little apps it can get confusing even after i've done this <laughs> right uh but this is something you really don't need in the beginning uh, or i'm sorry after you do this once, you won't need to come back to it, right? So, uh, but on this, it'll, it'll ask you, it'll come up with this screen here. It'll pick out the name of your PC that you're using on. And you'll want to say, add, add a haptic uh, device network box, which I did already, which is why this comes up as mine. But you will see this first, uh, D-Box Systems. You click on, after it found it right, uh, you go through the little program that it sets you through. Yes, whatever, and go through it. And then you'll want to sign in, and it requires a subscription. And this is the Haptic Sync subscription. Now, Haptics for your uh, actual games are all included. It, this is really just pertaining to the Haptic system uh, for the movies, which we'll get into here in a second. But you do need to have to register it. Uh, you don't have to pay for any of that, except if you want the movie features and you have to pay for it. I haven't done it. They didn't give me a free trial or anything, which kind of sucks. Why don't you give like a 30 day free trial just for people to check it out? But they didn't. But in this, in this program here, or in this app rather, you see the D-Box gaming, the video gaming, adaptive audio and adaptive gaming. So these are the same selections you have in another app that I'm going to show you. So the reason I, I point this out here real quickly is that you, you'll want to go to the D-Box Haptic Sync and connect your computer to it and register your serial number and all that. So uh, sorry I didn't say that in the very beginning, but, uh, but yeah, this is what you'll end up doing. But it's okay that you install, you have to install that software first anyway, but at some point you're going to have to, it's going to automatically pop this up for you to do, uh, but just to give you an FYI, this is going to pop up and it's going to ask you to register it and once you do it once, you can close the box, you're done, all right? Now, <laughs> if you don't have any issues, it's smooth and easy, just like we walk through, right? But if you do have some issues, go back through here and try to help diagnose uh, what's going on. But pretty much what I, as long as you have this hooked up to your PC, USB to your PC, and power wires all hooked up, you're good to go. And obviously you have them in the right arrangement on that uh, haptic box everything's pretty smooth uh, but it's just a pain in the butt because it's all in several apps uh, all right so let's go ahead and open up uh, the gaming center so i have a shortcut to that but same thing for for you is uh, initially until you set it as a shortcut you can go to the d box and go to 
D box and then game center right here. And when you do that, this game center pops up and voila, there you are. Now this is where all the fun starts, right? Now, anytime you're going to play a game, this is the only thing you're going to launch. You don't need any of the other stuff. Uh, but you know what I found? I found something pretty cool here before we go into this. Uh, if you're like me, I got triple monitors here, or you know, you got a monitor that's maybe not attached to your rig, and you want everything to be as close to you as possible, but you don't know how high this is going to go up and down without measuring it, right? You can measure it and, and then figure it out that way. But if you go back to this program and go to D Box Utilities, you see this Stimula Presenter. Click on that. And with that, before I get into the game center, now you see my motion rig goes up. And I'm looking directly underneath my monitor to see how close my direct drive is to the monitor. <laughs> so, uh, of course, I set it to where it's like uh, two millimeters from hitting the monitor. Uh, but this is where you can play with that. So you can, here it has the heave, right, up and down. So you can use your, your um, arrow keys and hit heave. And it's at the max height right here so I can look and make sure set my monitors where I need it or my rig where I need it and have the heave and then push the arrow down again it goes down, down. and then this is where you can kind of feel what the rig does so you can follow along on the screen here and it, uh, what left and right let's see roll pitch travel let's see what it does T let's go to T T is the gun so it kind of rocks and you feel that haptic of the gun G and H uh, let's see G more aggressive H from the back side, G from like the left side. Explosion, let's try this. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's awesome. All right, uh, so yeah, anyway, this is just something, I thought it was kind of cool. I didn't find this until today I was doing this review. I was like, oh, yeah, Cal, I could have used that. <laughs> but yeah, I like this heave part of it. But anyway, I'll finish with that. Now you see this goes back to normal. Oh, one more thing. If you don't like to weigh uh, your uh, system parks, right? Uh, you can go over here to global settings. And this is why I say you only need, really need this program here. You hold a control panel. It'll pull up your control panel, which is where we did our testing, right? And you'll see default mode park is where I use it, but you can say hold center and hit apply. And then it's gonna uh, set it to where it holds center, right? And then the same thing for, uh, which is already holding center right now, so that's why it's not moving. Uh, hold low, hit apply, it should drop down low. Let's see, give it a second. It's not doing it. Well, it's supposed to do it. Hit a part, hit apply. Earlier when I tried this, it actually worked. But okay, it doesn't work, but that's what it's supposed to do. Um, oh, there it goes. <laughs> I, I didn't, I'm not patient enough, I'm sorry. Uh, so now park is going to the lowest setting. If you were to look outside your rig, the uh, everything's fully compressed for your actuators. That's usually where I, I leave it setting par parked uh, and go from there. All right, so that's it. You can just you know close that out. Now coming back to your gaming center here itself. This is where all your games live. This is like I said, the main program you'll use all the time. All the other ones you're done with it. Congratulations, your system's working. You're about to have a lot of fun. So uh, download, it'll rec it will show you all the games that are possible. It doesn't recognize, it'll recognize those games when you, once you click install, but these are all the games and going slow on purpose, so a couple little clicks here so you can see what they are. If you're just interested, see if this, if your game is on the list that you really like on here, but it's pretty much every sim racing game and then some and flying games as well. So yeah, I was just going down the list a little bit here. X Plane, last ones, right? Now I have quite a few of them loaded on here. I thoroughly enjoy this. But I said of course the uh, AMS2, Dirt Rally, EA, the new EA WRC just came out. That's there. Forza Motorsports, awesome. Forza four and five. Uh, Forza Horizon, sorry, four and five. Uh, Grid, Project Cars two and three, Race Room, R Factor, Grid Legends. I've tried all these games. The only one I couldn't try yet was the Crew Motorfest. I was downloading their free little, I don't know, uh, so many hour free run. And their program kept dying, kept kept killing off. So it never would run. So I couldn't try it out with motion to tell you if it's any good, but I'll try it again later. All right, so uh, just what I want to point out here is a lot of these you'll see special instructions. Click on them and see what they say. If it says automatic, that means when you launch your game, <clears throat> 
it will this game center will automatically recognize the game whether you have this launched or not and it will go ahead and, and um, launch it right now if you leave this system in park like I did it always it, then it, once you launch your game and it kicks on the game center it'll raise up into the position it won't actually even load up the game center you'll have to click on it separately if you wanted to look at it to manipulate it or something like that but uh, your, your motion of course raise up now if you leave it on hold center as soon as you turn on your PC, you'll see your motion rig go up to the position because it'll send a signal to it to say, go hold center. All right, so just to keep that in mind. I didn't like seeing that every time I turn on the PC. That's why I myself put it in park. So just a little FYI. All right, so like I said, announce uh, do any of these that say automatic, you're good to go. Ones that were a little bit of a uh, extra step rather would be motor, uh, Forza Motorsport series, any of the Forza series. And I'll drag this over here. And this one, you have basically this little task here. And if you're familiar with Forza games with any other motion or with direct drive wheels, you have to set an IP address and a port for it. No different from here. Now, what I don't know is, is what I do know is like Sim Experience has, has their uh, own uh, direct drive cloud settings and stuff. And so if you try to use the cloud settings for this, you use up that port and you're kind of screwed, right? So, or you can just use your default base information and then go from there. Uh, so that's only one downside I don't like. I don't know if the other new direct drive wheels all all work the same way, but this one does work that, that way. But anyway, just set your port in. Once you set it once, it's in like the game, game hub for the motorsport itself in game. Set it while you have the game launched and then you're good to go. Then all you do is click launch. And when you click launch, it launches this little screen here. It's probably, yeah, here you go. The system lifts up and gets ready for battle. <laughs> All right. Now it's just waiting for the game to actually be launched. So, of course, you obviously open up the game yourself. And, uh, yeah, you're ready to go. Leave this up. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and close it because I'm not launching the game. That's about it. So, now let's dive in real quick to the actual in-game setting. So, every game has their own little parameters. So, some are very overlapping. You'll see the same parameters in each one, but say Automobilista 2, for example. Drag this over here, you get, and that's just by double clicking on it, or you can click settings and it'll open up as well. You can also click on update list every once in a while if you wanted to update the list. But what I notice is as soon as you turn on a computer, once you, I usually launch the game center because I want to fiddle around with these still. Uh, it'll tell me uh, that you have an update and you just download the latest update. Now I haven't found a spot that tells you what all is going to get update after I did the update. Go to the website and says, what is this update about? I don't ever see that afterwards. So that's kind of a pity as well. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. This uh, global parameters here, now we're going back because it recognized that it's going back to my part position because it recognizes that I didn't launch the game. So after a certain amount of time, it goes back to easy peasy mode global parameters and you have this motion profile editor they're kind of it's hard to distinguish them they need a little bit more contrast in these boxes I think but uh, this one here you can just mess with this one alone max level I leave it at 100% it means you're going to put out 100% of what's um, all these settings on the next tab have motion uh, vibration balance whether you want more of that vibration up front or more of it in the rear or you just want to balance the same you, you can set that here as well Motion profile, if you have several different profiles, I have a less bumpy profile. I can just click on less bumpy and hit save all. And then while I'm in the game, I can just pull this up while I'm in the game and it'll automatically go to those settings. So pretty handy. And you don't have to go here and click uh, motion profile editor. If you already have them, you can just stay right here and just change it back and forth. Just make sure you hit save all and that's where it's at. Now, if you do want to do some adjustments here, you can go to your motion profile editor, of course. You can clone anything. Uh, so, like, if you want to start with a new one uh, from default right here, I can say clone, and it says default clone. And then I can go ahead and rename this to whatever. I'm going to just say testing, right? Hit enter. Now it fills testing. Now I have these three. I have default, less bumpy. You can see the parameters change. And then uh, testing looks just like what my default is. Now, if you don't want to set this up, no big deal. You can just mess with the default. Make sure you hit save all on, on after you make your adjustments, you're good to go. But sometimes you want different parameters for, for different things, right? Different cars, different tracks. So 
Uh, and it, let's say you don't like this no more, so I don't want testing. So make sure you're on the one you want. Default won't delete. I wouldn't think it would. But I'll go to testing and say delete. It's gone. Just like that. Now all I have less is less bumpy. <laughs> uh, and then default. Uh, all right. So default normally. So I've messed around with this AMS2 default just because it's easier to do sometimes just in this configuration. But normally default is this is set to 40 for everything. Uh, is default and actually I honestly gotta say default settings is really good on all of these games just out of the box but you may not want as much of motion with with your setup but uh, what I do recognize is that if you're doing a road car uh, default for road car is like a softer suspension it's not as jarring but then you go get into a GT3 or something like that and it's more jarring and more forceful and you can feel it it it, it knows what cars you're using right so Keep that in mind and that's why you may want different configurations for road cars you may want it to be a little bit more jarring for you to feel more like a race car is right or or, or a road car with updated suspension right so, uh so yeah that's why you, you could use those but uh what happens here is you got this whole list here general motion of course front and rear uh left and right and then up and down your heave right up and down so i like a lot of heave uh 38 is fine on this one here uh, for this game but uh, 40 is feels great as well, but uh, roll uh, reactivity dampening. This is a new one that just got added from an update, which is I haven't really experimented with it separately, but it's the uh, in the rolling right of it and the reactivity of how quick it starts to to do that. And same with pitch, right? Uh, hopefully, you can tell from my body motions of what's actually going to be going on. <laughs> YSS here, inverted, y'all. Uh, this is only if you hold over here, it says for 6DOF only. This isn't a 6DOF system. A lot of times this is already pre-selected as on. You don't need it. You can just click it off. I usually click it off. If this list is long, it usually kind of shortens it up a little bit. Engine vibrations is exactly what it says. It's going through all the four actuators. Now, this is where you can change how you want your, your power to be distributed, right? So uh, more in the front, like an engine, or a rear engine car, more in the rear that kind of thing uh but this one this one is it's is good i like a lot of engine vibration i toned it down just a little bit keep in mind as you see here on the screen it says an increase of plus six will double the current engine uh, let me go back to that again the current engine vibration intensity and a decrease of negative six will half it right so just six six buttons let's go 40 right here so if i was going to go down to uh 34 it's going to half what i was already feeling so even though the scale is only going to like 60, it's it's quite effective along these increments, right? So keep that in mind. And if you forgot where you are, you can hit uh, this little button here, which is reset. But <laughs> the downside is, is if you may not remember where you really liked it, right? So uh, it doesn't remember that. Uh, and I'll give you an example here. If I'm scrolling through here with my mouse wheel, it automatically changes things. And so I'm here, look at that, it changes that. I go to here, changes it with the mouse wheel. I totally hate that. I wish it wouldn't do that. Because I don't know where the heck I'm at now. I don't know, what did I do this to? This I didn't set this up in, you know, three weeks ago. I don't know. But you can go ahead and hit close and say no. Uh, if you get off track right, just close it. And then go back on it, open it up again. And you will see the less bumpy and then uh, defaults back see this is all kosher again right and I noticed now I just had testing on there still and I hit delete again I think a while ago I didn't hit save all let's try this out bottom list two boom yeah I don't have testing so you got to make sure you hit save all after you delete something otherwise which is kind of good so if you actually didn't delete it something like shit shouldn't have done that just close it without saving you're good other stuff is is of course okay engine vibration you can do a custom engine vibration here to where you want to fill it a, a certain vibration at low effects and then high effects high rpm right uh suspension this is your suspension travel you know how abrupt it feels and then your road textures which will be picked up from your haptic system and then you got your rumble strips. This is all haptics at this point. Skid vibration is haptics. Well, actually, skid vibration, you'll, you'll feel the, uh, the, um, the actual skidding of it you where know, you're getting some wheel hop. So motion. Uh, impacts is motion. <laughs> it scares shit out of you when you get hit by a car. 
and you're not expecting it because you literally feel which side of the car you get hit, whether it's your, your right wheel or if they hit you just directly from the side, you feel it across like your whole side. And uh, so cool. You know, this system is basically an independent uh, suspension setup, right, for, for motion. So yeah, I love it. So that's just a quick look at, at these settings here of, of what you can do with that. Obviously, uh, I'll say like Forza Motorsport, that will have different ones. It's a little bit more of a gamey uh, Simcade, we call it, right? Uh, you can stretch this down, but you can't make it wider, which I hate. I, I don't know why you can't make it wider, <laughs> but you can't. But uh, here you, you'll notice some of the settings here. I have Fave set up. Uh, and that's the only reason I have that, and you'll notice they're quite high, is that sometimes when I launch Forza Motorsports, it doesn't register correctly in this, this uh, motion core, and it'll be very muted feeling. So I was like, what the hell? Did I not set my settings right? So I went ahead and upped them here. And, uh, and then the next time I launched the game, this was crazy settings. I'm like, whoa, this is way too, too much. And uh, I went back to default, right? So I just never deleted that because I wanted to show you that uh, during this review process. Forza games are a little finicky, as you probably know, <laughs> on the PC. Uh, so it still holds true here, uh, even in, into this. But generally, 95% of the time, I would say, when I launch Forza, this works fine. Uh, actually, after the last couple updates, I haven't had that problem uh since but in the very beginning i did for sure so i don't know if it was this software not reading from forza correctly or forza given false information i don't know but it works great now uh but yeah that's what i see but you still you'll still see the general thing here is you got the general motion chassis rotation this one's different right just chassis rotation it was called a little bit different on the other one engine vibration the same the effects skid vibration surface texture rumble strip vibration I like the uh, skid vibration too because it's like you can feel when your uh, your tires are skipping. So especially under analog brakes and you're you know chipping along. If you have ABS completely off, you can totally feel where you need to back off your brake just a tad. Uh, so it's like your own ABS indication of what's going on, uh, but you're feeling it through the whole rig. So you never feel that really in the wheel itself when you're going dead straight. But when you're going to the side, then you kind of feel it, right? So yeah, pretty cool cool little setup all right so hmm oh that's about it for the gaming center now just to digress some more you have these other tabs here right like I said earlier global settings you can just go over here quickly to pull up that control panel if you want to set your parking and all that if you wanted to but here you got D box coded video this is a subscription base so if you have what it means is that mo um, uh, movies that have motion because D box first started out in the theaters um, you can have motion in your in your setup uh, from the movie plane. So just like you probably see here, if I click this, just like this, their seats are moving on the screen, change the intensity. This is basically what this rig will do with the motion. Uh, and that guy's using a gaming chair as well, uh, using motion, which this will do as well, but not through that section of it. So uh, this one's for the coded video. I don't have any any uh any knowledge as far as telling you how i liked it or didn't like it because i didn't pay for it they didn't give you a free uh subscription to it for say 30 day or something like that which is, i think is pretty cheesy when you spend a grand for a product they don't at least give you a, a 30 day trial on something like that but uh you just have to pay for it up front and then if you don't like it then don't renew right but that's cheesy uh but i hope dbox sees this a review but uh okay adaptive gaming this is the next one adaptive gaming uh, this is uh this is visit the page this is this gaming control uh, center here so you click on this and it'll pull up another app for you <laughs> and in this app this is where if you want to play say like uh well right here you see doom uh, EA Sports, FC24, Elden Ring, Fall, uh, Fall Guys? Wow, okay. Far Cry 5, uh, Fortnite, GTA 5. Her GTA 5 is actually quite fun uh, with this one. But you see right now they're all graded out. I have to go over here and click on it. And then it'll switch over to this program. So it's kind of a safety so you don't mess up things, I would imagine. So again, this one does let you stretch it out both ways, which is nice. But uh, this has a tutorial for you. This is really cool. They have a tutorial that lets you test out different features of it. And uh, like now it's going up on this tutorial. 
action continuous is like Q it says. So I think if I hit Q, I could feel like a very low rumble in here. If I hit W, can't see it in the video, but the the it was kind of moving, right? So on. Uh, but what this thing doesn't tell you is how to do it for a gamepad. I, I like gamepads because I like to feel the immersion of, uh, of the haptic track. So uh, what I did, and I just figured out, it's like, trial and error, just try stuff, right? Uh, as, I, as I wanted to mess with Far Cry 5, but in a gamepad. And so I come down here to where, where the heck is it? Far Cry 5 is keyboard. Now, if you right click on that, you can say duplicate. It'll duplicate the game and then just change your name to uh, whatever you want, right? Um, right now it's selected, so when I hit my uh, left mouse key, I don't know if you can hear it or you can see this move, but it's it's, it's a firing uh, action, right? The space bar, it kind of raises up and down. I don't know if you see that or not, but that's a jump, right? So it's jumping. Uh, see, C is for crouching, so it just kind of goes down and holds it. It just kind of goes down quickly and then resides back to where it was and so on and so forth right so you can make these do all these different things and you can set each one to do something differently right there's some logic to it as well you know which one to change in what spot and what letters i know when i was setting up for the gamepad for far cry 5 which i click on now now it switches over to far cry 5 the gamepad if i had the gamepad hooked up it would show it walking and, and you know, you'd feel all the different things, the trigger for firing and stuff. So set it up just like you would set up any other uh, other uh, custom settings for a keyboard, but you do it for your gamepad button. So really cool, I love it. What I found, I don't find myself really using it because when I get time to get on the rig, I'm going sim racing. But uh, I thought it was really cool. And uh, Cooler Master makes a system with D-Box and a whole chair, and I think it's like, I don't know, three, four grand, something like that. But you have that already built in with this uh, four, with these four actuators, three DOF. So much even, even better. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, I think it's kind of good value that you got this extra layer of movies and the gaming control system here for your, just, you know, basically you bought it for sim racing, right? But you got these other two aspects you can use as well. So pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and if I don't hit off on this I can just close it but if you come over here it says haptic sync mode I can come back and say dbox code it gaming which of course it'll come back here but what you notice is when I click on each one of these boxes this doesn't change so I'm back to where I was right uh, all right adaptive audio beta that's in beta beta right now uh, I haven't messed with it so I couldn't tell you anything about it then close global settings so all right, well, that covers, that was a, uh, a lung full of discussion here about, <laughs> about the, uh, the hardware and, of course, the software. So, uh, software is a lot more involved. All right, next we'll go on to the next topic. Hold on. All right, so the next topic is forums. I'll just cover that quickly. It'll be just a, just a second. <laughs> Uh, all right, so when you go to the D box here, you actually have a, a, a forum that you can go and complain <laughs> or get tips uh, and stuff like that. Now, one thing I wish they had is configurations you could download. I know Next Level Racing had configurations that you could uh, eventually they adapted to where you could grab someone else's configuration instead of someone doing screenshots and stuff. I used to just put my profiles out on my uh, OneDrive and for people to access it and have fun with it and try it out for themselves. but. Uh, this doesn't have that system. I really look forward to if they actually adopt something like that. You may like my settings. You may be 250 pound guy and you're like, I'm his same weight. Uh, what his settings is that he's having fun with. Let me try them and see if they work. Now, if you get one of my daughters that are like 100 pounds wet, <laughs> it's going to be way too active for them. You're going to want to turn them down. So it'd be nice if that is something um, uh, they can adapt. Surely they can adapt it in, right? So just whether they do it or not, I don't know. But by the forums would be a place to start, right? So D click on what I just did, Dbox Plus. You got a community catalog. And then, uh, of course, subscription is, like I said earlier, for the movies, which we're not going to mess with. Uh, but go over here to community. And you'll want to you'll wanna sign up, right, if you haven't signed up. And then log in, right? So I won't, I won't log in right now. It's not that big of a deal. But uh, this is where you can... Uh, 
find out help that you may need for different stuff. For us, sim racing community is the one I usually venture to. I see we have several, like here's one I've commented on or I made automobilista shift effects. This is a complaint uh, about automobilista that I had. And these are the settings that I used uh, to counteract it. Now what happened with automobilista 2 in the beginning was uh, the front and rear is controlled by the shifting, the jolting. It literally was giving me a headache. It was jolting so hard. And so I think they dialed it down just a tad with this update. It's not enough to me. So for Automobile Blister 2, you're going to want to follow something like this. Change your front and rear intensity, which kind of sucks because your dive is now lessened and your back is kind of lessened as well as far as your front goes. So when you take it off, right? But you have to do that to lessen the shift. So I don't know if it's the, uh, the force feedback from the game not being split up between those two channels or not, or if it's D-Box to do it. But either way, it sucks <laughs> as far as that goes. But as far as everything else about AMS 2, but that's the only complaint I had with that one. But uh, forums to me are kind of dead uh, on, on this uh, platform. Uh, people post some things. It's kind of like doing the forums in... Uh, some uh, AccuForce, you know, people when they have a problem, they'll post the forum and then people like me will periodically go to it and respond to it. I'm sure there's a lot of active members in here, but I'm not here enough to, to investigate it. But anyway, they'll they'll uh, let you know about new new things. Here it goes, Audible 2, broken and safe. This is some other guy that posted about that. And so people will respond to it, right? It's a forum. But anyway, that's it on forums. Okay. <laughs> We'll go on to the next thing, and the next will be um, what I have. All right, so I'll, I guess I want to consider or go over some considerations when I was going into picking the D box. Now, I, I got to admit, I had been watching D box videos for a long time, um, Sim Racing Garage, and, and the experience he's had with them, and of course, all the various other ones he's had uh, on there. But you know, there were some considerations of what I wanted to do budget wise and uh, compactness of the system. So really two of them that really stood out as far as kind of mainstream setups was was the D-Box and the Next Level Racing, right? So, uh, but under D-Box, they came out with this new H, as you see here on the screen, this HFL4 haptic frame. And this makes a lot of sense actually, because it's actually at the time when I was shopping, this was like 8200 or yeah, 8100 something like that. Uh, last year so it went for the exact same price as what uh the d-box gen 5 cost except you have this this whole frame here right so i was like hmm, same amount of money why not get this all in one and you can set your rig in there in the frame itself and uh yeah be able to rock and roll and i almost went with that and so you can see here you got brackets here that you can hook up to your frame uh me being the sim labs <clears throat> P1X uh, form, right? But <clears throat> the the reason I didn't go with this, even though at the time it was like the same price, was the uh, repairability on it. So if you have a problem with the D box the way it is, the way I have it, the G5, and you had an actuator go down or you need something to repair, you simply just pull one off and send it off to them to get repaired. But this. Now, if you know anything that works about warranties is generally they want you to send the whole platform <laughs> to you, right? So, mm, you know, if I had one go out, I could actually set this setup as a three, as a uh, two actuators in the back and one in the front if I wanted to get by and limp by with some motion like that. But with this system, you're down. You got to send this whole thing in. So this is a pain in the butt to do. Second reason I didn't pick this one, even though I think it's beautifully done, is that uh, it, it knocks down some weight, your weight limit off of it. So I think mine's, this is to like 800 pounds of weight, which is great. And then mine's up to a thousand. So you got a big person in here <laughs> sitting on here. Are you adding more and more to your, to your setup, like monitors and stuff like that? You, the weight adds up really fast. So I didn't want any, I didn't want to get close to the limits of anything here. Uh, so I went with what was the easiest to repair because I'm an engineer, I work in manufacturing, and <laughs> that is the simplest way to do it. And so that's why I went with the one I went between uh, the different styles of D-Box, play seat version, or the 
independent uh, D-Box and G5 setups. But uh, again, I think this is beautifully done. Uh, I think there's some mechanisms here with the uh, way this is is uh, moving here, the way it's pivoting, which is you know, reasonably why you're, you're down a couple hundred pounds on max capacity. Makes sense, because now you have these pivot points of these bolts, something else to fail. So well, why put yourself through the hassle? But if you like it, I think it's beautifully done and uh, something to consider because you got one plug into the wall, one in USB, all the actuators configured for you. Easy peasy, right? And it looks very slick. Very, very slick. So beautifully done. But okay, now the other system now that I was considering was the uh, next level racing. So I already had this one here with the V3. Failed in three years on me. So $34.99, I think I bought it for $3,000 back in the day and so the new ones uh that they have here which came out and i was really considering to spend some money on a motion rig uh this actually went on sale pretty cheap on amazon and uh so i could get the whole system for around six grand because they had a really good sale on amazon <clears throat> and i almost did it uh, but uh when you start looking at this little rod here and I already had a failure with the other system, right? And, uh, you know, one of the uh, joints broke on it internally and uh, identified it and just snapped. So just poor quality metal use. But I just can't see this lasting with this thin little rod compared to big old D-Box uh, uh, actuator that you have. Let me see if we can pull up the picture real quick. This big old shaft <laughs> uh, compared to that little that little one. Uh, yeah, to me, it just doesn't make any sense how this is going to last for a long time, uh, whether it works or not. Now, you'd have to have two of these units, right? So you're at $7,000, right, uh, for both of them because you had one in the front and one in the back to have the full, so you have the heave motion. So no big deal, super easy to install. I love their software, really like their software. But yeah, it's just longevity-wise, I don't think it makes any sense for, for me, right? So that's another one to consider. Now, I think now looking at some things now if you're interested in um well i'll get back to this here in a second the third one was well, actually four of them i considered there was the the pro sim u of that one but it cost too much uh, but so i, I wanted around eight thousand dollars so this kind of neglected itself just with that extra grand in there right uh but i would i would have to get this p5 mp because their regular sim racing rig that goes on this, which costs the same thousand, the same thing, nine thousand dollars with their little rig, to me is very cheesy and uh, <laughs> and uh, cheap, and, and it's not going to last. Plus, you don't have enough um, areas that you can bolt on extra shifters and handbrakes and a review product, so it just didn't make any sense to me. Chassis seemed very weak. Although this part, the platform looks awesome. Uh, I think this would this is well built, and they have actually have added a uh, eighty twenty rig setup I've seen on this website for their uh, their uh, two do two DOF with the traction loss right. Uh, so yeah, this makes sense if you had a little bit more coin uh, to use. I think this would be awesome for traction loss as well. So have a true four DOF, it'd be really cool. But <laughs> the one that's even less expensive is the cubic system. So you know. I would really like to investigate uh, one of these, the cubic systems. This is another one that I'm most interested in. And really the difference between this one and mine was at the time was the, um, I think at the time the game selection wasn't quite as big as mine. And uh, no, it is. No, this was, I'm thinking of something different. No, this game selection is the same because it uses the software like I have. Like Next Level Racing, their software, uh, Motion Systems is, is the company that makes their stuff. Uh, they make this cubic system, right? And so the software is exactly what I like. Um, and it has the VR compensation in it, which I love. It works really well. So when you're in a bank and you're, you're leaned over, uh, your headset adjusts for that angle, which is really cool. So it doesn't look like you're sitting in the headrest, right? <laughs> uh, so that, for instance, I think this is really good. But uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, I, uh, I was really sold on the, the compactness of the D box uh, compared to how big these actuators are and uh, expense wise, this was, was less expensive. But then I start leaning like, well, if I'm going to get this cubic <laughs> uh, system, this is where you start adding on. I was like, man, I'd rather have um, the 220 
3DOF because then I could advance it to something else. And I could go to 4DOF, well, right here it says 3, 4, and 5 to 6DOF. Then you can just start building on it as you want. So I'm like, mm, maybe I'll purchase that later down the road. Uh, 7,900 uh, ver euros, really, which is like, what is that, 86.56 US dollars? Um, maybe that's something I, I, I can get down the road and, and then go to, say, a 4 or 5 DOF or even a 6 DOF at that point. But start there and be able to advance it, right? So, But for the money, just in comparison wise, if you're in the market for this, there's really two products that stand out to me, and it'd be the Cubic System and the D-Box. And really the reason you would go with D-Box is it's been in business for 25 years, I think, something like that. The Cubic System hasn't been in business that long, right? Uh, so it's a tried and true product. It works. All the bugs have been worked out of it. And they're really known for their haptic system. Now, the haptic system I heard on, on the Cubic System is... Is decent. I haven't experienced it or not. Obviously, I didn't experience the D box either before I had it, but it had a lot of uh, uh, reviews on it, right? So, of how good it is. But I'd love to try the QS210 to see how that one is. I think it'd be an excellent system. So, it'd be a really hard choice for, choice uh, if you if you don't care about it being extra compact for this room that I'm in. I uh, wanted everything just not really big actuator standing up, not too obvious of what's going on, but then. You know, it's just nice and slim and I don't really like these big boxes in the way so <laughs> when they went through the Gen 5 uh, to me for the D box that kind of sold me on that because it's, it's all built into the to the motor itself and all you have is that one little box so ease as far as hooking up to your actual rig was a lot easier and, and quicker to get going with the D box uh, compared to this but yeah it would be a uh, it, these two is, is a challenge to think about, right? Which one you would want, the Cubic Systems QS210, because it's actually less money, 58, 58.50, which is, oh, I'm sorry, 58.58, so that's $6,400, right? Oh, good money, I paid $7,777, right? <laughs> for mine at the discount. So yeah, this would save me a little bit more coin, right? So yeah, that's a, that's a good system to consider. So. Anyway, I don't really care which one you buy. It doesn't affect me anyways. Uh, but these are two that I would consider when you're looking at the mark of, say, 8000 and below. These are the two main systems that I would really consider. Now, if you decide you want to go with the D-Box, um, the one I would recommend, if, if you like mine, uh, my setup, uh, you know, the D-Box with these uh, advanced racing brackets, they're great. They're money. They just they work really well. Uh, so you can go say advanced sim racing. If you want to use my affiliate link, you could go to uh, a digital motorsports. They sell the same thing uh, as well. So you could check it out there as well. Now, if you want your rig to set a little bit lower than this, uh, because now your actuators here are attached to these two holes here, like you'd seen in the videos that I showed you, and uh, it, it sets it up just a little bit higher. But when you look at the track racer, uh, yeah, set up here, these brackets, when they set in the system, you uh, everything, these set higher up on your 8020 rig, so they're coming above the level of your uh, P1X, which you may not like. I like that my, my top of my D-Box, the top of these here are level with uh, my 8020, they don't set extend it out from it, so it keeps it real nice and slim looking. But I also kind of like that this sets the whole system down a little bit lower, so I can ensure that my monitors are closer to me, and I'm not the motion's not possibly going to hit the monitor, so I can have it up closer to me. Now I use an AccuForce wheel, so it's a very thin, thin wheel because the electronics are in a separate box, right? So. Uh, but I can certainly see using this with say a semi cube or any of the other uh, OWS style motors. So, but yeah, this is a good one here, and actually, it's a little bit less expensive because seventy nine fifty for the whole setup with the brackets, as opposed to sim racing, you got seventy nine fifty plus an extra hundred and twenty bucks for the brackets. And actually, is that four brackets for two actuators? So sorry, you need eight brackets, so that's two hundred thirty dollars extra for it. So. A little bit extra do, but you also can get a 5% discount if you haven't ever signed up on them or you filled out a different uh, email address. And I guess as long as you never bought something from them before, 
then yeah, this that would work setting up a new uh, address to get that five percent off i think when you go here it'll pop up on the screen maybe the first time you go to it but it gives you a five percent discount but uh anyway for new accounts that is but um yeah that's my consideration it's just something for you to consider when you're shopping for motion let's get on to the next topic Alrighty, so we've got the uh, everything hooked up, hardware, software ready to go. You're ready to rock and roll and actually have some fun with your with your uh, system here. So uh, in this section of the video, I'm just going to go over my impressions of the system in use, uh, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and uh, and, and the haptics as well. So uh, first out of the box, uh, let me I just play some video here, and uh, so you're not bored with just hearing me talk. But you'll see various games uh, going through the motions, right? So, um, real quick, what I don't like about it is the VR uh, system on here. So, it doesn't have a VR uh, compensation setup, say like the Cubic Systems or uh, Next Level Racing, which uses uh, motion systems, which creates uh, Next Level Racing's rigs and then also Cubic rigs as well. But uh, their software is really good uh so and i think the software again as well for the d-box is has a lot to be improved on uh, compared to a system like the motion systems uh setup uh, for one it has more settings in the uh, motion systems uh, setups where like for instance on your shake off and your deceleration if you want to not do a nose dive so much with your motion but you want it to slam you back hard more expressive than what really reality just because you want to have fun you can do that with their system but with this one you can't you're only adjusting frontwards and backwards at the same intensity level which is actually more realistic right you would think it would be more realistic but it may not be uh, depending on the suspension setup you actually have on a car so if you have a drag racing car front end is going to lift it's going to slam you back in the seat really hard but it's not really going to want to nose dive so much because it has so much travel in the suspension right for instance right uh, of course, we don't really pay, play drag racing games. <laughs> I don't think there's hardly any any good ones that are actually simulate this, anyways, for a PC. If there is, let me know. I'd like to try it out. But uh, that is, for instance, the software uh, and and the VR motion compensation is is lacking, in, in my opinion. So um, keep that in mind when you're going here. Now, it is adequate. It does the job. Uh, good. I don't, uh, I do feel a little bit like it's lacking, obviously, like I'm saying, but uh, it gets the job done. I'm not too concerned about it. It's not a deal breaker for me, okay? But it's not as a bed of roses like all the other YouTubers seem to make it, right? So it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it is what it is, but uh, it's severely lacking. Now, um, and then uh, also with everything being in one app instead of freaking four apps right so it's ridiculous but uh now the vr compensation to me that's a little bit disorientating when you're on the screen uh when you're you're viewing your game say M ams2 or something you'll want to turn down your, your motion effects that are in game that you would normally see on a regular uh screen that you're looking at uh where it's bouncing and stuff you want to turn that down as low as possible because your rig's going to be bouncing your eyeball is going to be trying to adjust and you're in the VR and so it can get a little bit disorientating a little bit of a headache and have to learn your sea legs again for VR so I don't like that part however I think D boxes uh, had some complaints for it uh, as well but they said they haven't had enough complaints to actually consider it so what is what I read in the forum so uh, and it is uh, their stance is, it seems like their stance is that it's more uh, realistic uh, to not have that fake compensation uh, in the game for it. So, yeah, it is what it is. I'm going to let you know. I'm just a reviewer here. So, all right, going on to the next. I got the, the bad part out of the way. So, uh, the goods is freaking wild. This thing is immersive feeling, as you just saw through this video. You, you feel the jumps. You feel the... The compression of your front suspension going up a hill and then decompressing when you're in the midair and then land back down your front back end compresses it's really cool uh, I will say that uh, for dirt racing I do like more travel than what this is doing you know, this is an inch and a half of travel I think the cubic systems is like 2.7 inches or something like that and then the new three inch uh, travel one that D-Box is coming out with, which would be the same type of Hammerhawk design from what I understand, 
will be three inches of travel. I think that would be a better setup if you're someone that uh, loves dirt racing and, and that's your primary goal is dirt racing. I, I think you should go with something, if you're gonna buy today, probably the Cubic Systems uh, that has more travel. And if you're just concentrating mostly on street, which is what I really concentrate a lot on, this is just really fun. It is adequate, like everybody says, for road racing and street racing. I don't desire any more than what this is traveling uh, for that. But for dirt, yeah, definitely want some more travel. I do find myself bottoming out the suspension, uh, on the travel on this system and this dirt racing stuff. But again, it is, as you see, it's chunking me around. Now, you may think that's a little bit too much, but I say go back to the beginning of the video where I tell you to think about how your body actually moves in a car. If you ever went off-roading, I could go off-roading in a Bronco or, or any other cars or trucks, you know. Uh, <laughs> when you're on rough terrain, it's rough as hell and it throws you around everywhere and it's not fun and going fast over some of this stuff. It's really jarring. And, uh, but it is fun because you're out in the wilderness, right? But it, it can be very jarring to you, right? And really chunk you around really hard. And you gotta consider in these games, you're traveling pretty high speeds, hitting these, these dunes, these bumps, these rocks and all that. So it does equate pretty well. Now, if it's too much for you, you can turn down the system. It has plenty of, of room uh, forward and backwards to turn it up and then down, right? Then you can even also turn down the crash detection. So if you have a, a crash and you want to limit how it feels just in that crash for so many milliseconds, it'll do that for you too. So it, it does think about that as far as uh, you know effects on your body and stuff. So let's not get this confused. Uh, sim racing with motion is a lot more exhausting than just regular uh, racing without motion. Just like you can sit there with a controller and you can play all day long, but if you're handling a direct drive wheel, it's a lot more exhausting uh, to use. And uh, so your, your steady state, <laughs> you're, you're working out a little bit more uh, with that, the handling the wheel and stuff, right? So, uh, and then motion, of course, is just chunking around uh, as well. But again, you set it the way you like it to where it's not so, uh, to where it's, it's, it's amplifying what you want to feel, right? Now, I, never at any point do I consider it to be uh, too much motion. And if it does, I can just slide the overall intensity down on all of it and just easy piece real quick and easy right but yeah working good it's awesome i love it and you here you'll see in the video how this uh vehicle's pivoting even though my driving's not that great but uh you're seeing the motion is always constantly moving it's keeping up one to one with what you see on the screen which is important to not feel disconnected in sim racing now i do notice on some of the acceleration videos, or like when you first start off, it looks like it's slightly behind on on the uh, camera, but uh, in the game, it's not at all because you feel as the front end lifts up, and then and then of course it pivots right. So you have laps of your rig being uh, pivoting with the system, right? So it uh, just like you have reaction time for your car when you hit the gas, you have reaction time for your rig as well. But it seems when you're in it, you don't notice any lag at all. It's, it's just one to one. It's perfect. Uh, so that I, I commend them for having it. Oh man, just spot on. So it's really cool. Um, it is pretty jarring too at times, uh, for sure. Uh, see, uh, there's tons of examples of, of, of things that I like about this system. For instance, here's one. Well, there you see where I hit this rock in the front end and the back end pivoted and hit it. And it it's just chunking from bouncing off the rock from the front end and then the back end slides to it and then it bounces back off of that. It knows what tires hit and what. I mean, even when you go over, that's a great example, right? And then uh, one in particular that shocked me was, uh, was not a crash, but I slid through a berm and uh, my back tire was behind a big boulder and I took off and then just my left rear popped up and then landed back down as I went over this boulder. And I was like, oh, wow, it actually knew it's independent suspension, right? It, it worked as it should in a, in a real car. So it's very impressive that it, it picks up all these little uh, terrain details and stuff. So, And then you can actually feel the rocks and the gravel through the haptic system as you're going through it. Or if you don't want to feel that, you can turn all that back down off. So you have that leeway, but if you want it to feel as real as it is, you can you know leave it on, right? Uh, but, oh man, it's so cool to play with motion so in, in fact I, I missed motion for about a year and a half uh, when my other one system was down and and, and I, I will say that I uh, sim racing was quite boring to me 
uh, when I didn't have motion anymore. So, cause you lose all the immersion. And it's kind of like, what? <laughs> Once you ate a donut and you really liked it and someone took donuts away from you, you want a donut. So this is kind of the same thing. So yeah, it's it's good. Now, haptics, let's get into haptic system though. This haptic system on here is mind-blowingly good. I've had up to six transducers before uh, on my rig. Each one of them doing a different things, like one handling shifts, one handling engine RPM just at the front. I was screwed if it was a rear engine RPM, right? But, uh, and then in an independent suspension for each transducer. So you felt when your left went over a you know, front rumble stip, strip and the rear tire went over the right rumble strip. This all does the same thing. The biggest factor in this compared to say butt kickers and uh, other transducers that you use that I find is that the longevity of it lasting through a whole race. Uh, many times I've had the uh, transducers overheat and then shut off mid game and i'm in the middle of a race of like i racing or something like that and i'm like man what an immersion break breaking the thing to happen right but you know you carry on and move on through it now this one i can race long stints of races i've literally played two hours at a time just just enough to stop between to click another race right and, and keep going nothing overheats nothing quits working it's freaking energizer bunny of of a uh, haptic systems right in motion that's uh, it just spot on works every time doesn't get hot to the touch or anything like that so really like it uh and the uh, haptic systems is so strong it's much stronger than what i would feel in a butt kicker itself so um yeah i like it it, it reminds me of what you would get when you buy the really oversized big ass uh transducers the butt kickers is like that but having it on each each corner which would cost an arm and a leg to power those right <laughs> but uh another aspect of it is i don't have a ton of wires everywhere uh, with the haptic system and several amps to run each one of them so yes the, the haptics on here is really good you pick up your engine rpm you pick up your 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 gravel on the on the terrain you pick up your um your engine shifts actually you don't feel with the haptics you feel with the motion it, it moves you with the motion uh, which is interesting. Also interesting in the motion too is when you're taking off, of course it moves you, but when you grab a gear, it, it moves it back a little bit again, which I talked about in another video that I had for driving, how it feels to drive with the d box which is really cool. I like that as well. If you've rented any later sports cars, I rented a Mustang the other day to go out of town on, and uh, it had the same thing. When you shift it in next gear, it just like planted you back and then accelerated. It was really cool different than my normal car uh, but this picks up all those cues which is good but uh, yeah anything you can think of that a haptic system should pick up the rumble strips uh, games that aren't very pronounced in it are rumble strips that you wish had more more emphasis on the rumble strip just because you like rumble strips you can turn and dial it up and, and to your to your content you can dial it up so much that it would it would drive you nuts because it's too damn uh powerful right so really cool um yeah haptics love it all right so uh that's that's it as far as talking about my impressions of this and the uh haptics and stuff um next up will be the pros and then i'll go over the cons and then just my final thoughts on this to wrap up this video okay all right Alrighty, so let's cover the pros real quick. Uh, there's a ton of pros. Of course, you've already heard all my excitement about this rig and, and some of the cons, but let's label them out here. So cover some of the pros I may not uh, discussed uh, in the previous parts of this section. So uh, it's easy to set up hardware that of course I covered, but uh, very quickly plug and play. You just have to be careful about uh, where you plug in each, each uh, data port into the box. Just definitely pay attention to that. Uh, but uh, 100 uh, uh, millimeters per second uh, on this whole rig, so you get full stroke within a second. Uh, uh, so awesome. That's really awesome. Uh, really fast and, and powerful. Uh, low power usage. So we didn't talk about that earlier, but it's 540 watts for the four actuators. So those that are, are needing to have low power consumption, this is something to consider there. It has low power consumption and stuff. Here in the uh, US, it's not such a big deal for us, but yeah, I can imagine where in other areas it is. So, uh, but with that, it is also considered, it's not creating a bunch of extra heat. I get more heat out of these three monitors than, uh, than I do out of this. This is like a, a MacBook Air running that has no fan in it. It's just like, I don't even know if it has a fan. I don't think it does, but uh, it's, it's quiet and it's, uh, uh, 
uh, doesn't put off any heat. So uh, another pro is that it's quiet. It's extremely quiet. Uh, I can actually have a conversation with someone in the room without raising my voice while this system is going with someone sitting here playing on it with headsets. The transducers, uh, you know, transducers that you may use in, in another system, uh, butt kicker or others and stuff, are way, way louder uh, than, than these are. These are just super, super quiet. It's, it's unbelievable how quiet it is. Let's see, plus or minus one G of four. So I think you could get some whiplash with this because it's not sustained, obviously, but it's instant. Uh, so very uh, powerful system. Uh, another pro is 250 pound capacity per actuator. So that's, of course, if you get it in this setup that I have. Uh, so yeah, a thousand pounds worth. So you can put a lot on your rig here uh, and have plenty of headroom and not worry that you're, you're overexerting these actuators and stuff. So uh, a little bit more comfort room uh, for me, at least on that level. So it's cool, never overheats. Uh, and then it's the built-in haptics, another huge plus. The haptics in here are amazing, absolutely amazing. I love them. It's, it's probably one of the key features of this system is the haptics, in my opinion. The motion, of course, works awesome and I, I've, I understand why other people praise the haptics about it about this system because they are really powerful and good uh, I don't think it does it justice by saying hey it's like butt kickers it's nothing like butt kickers butt kickers don't stand a chance to these haptics in this system so but uh, that's is in my opinion of course right but um, yeah really good haptics uh, and it is extreme fun. The most important part of this is it's extremely fun. It transforms all your titles to be so much better. Even titles that you may not even care for that much uh, that you've bought and you're like, eh, they're okay. You'll go back and play and have a lot of fun with them. So yeah, it's very cool, very immersive and, and uh, just ups the level of fun. And I don't know about you, but that's what I see in Race Forge for fun. Uh, but yeah, that's all the cons. Up next, sorry, that's all the pros. Up next will be the cons. All right, so let's get into the cons here. Uh, no big surprise here. There's no e-stop button here. I wish it had an e-stop button just for safety. Uh, I think when you have a full motion rig uh, moving up and down, you may have an emergency where you need to stop it. After all, we have an emergency stop for a lot of our direct drive wheels when we can simply just remove our hands, right? So why don't we have one for a motion rig? Makes no sense to me. All right, so software, uh, another con software is, is uh, somewhat cumbersome and, and hard to troubleshoot. If you get into a situation, it's hard to troubleshoot. Went through a lot of little areas <clears throat> trying to figure out why something didn't work that should have worked right. Now, it was my own fault, I, I admit that. I, I was trying to use a, a my own e-stop button in between and it didn't like that. And it also wanted to uh, have a direct connection to the PC for the USB, which it does actually tell you that. So that's my fault. Uh, however, uh, yeah, it would have been uh, nicer to have a little bit more instructions, some video instructions of how to go through the setup uh, of it from them. Like I said, we have videos that, that tell you how to turn on a light switch, right? So it, we don't, but you get my point. It's, it's, we have these really asinine videos out there of how to do things that uh, as uh, <laughs> most of us grown-ups know how to do just inherently, right? But uh, it's so, yeah, why is there not any video instructions? All right, so uh, another one it, um, is the lacking some information on how to set up games for the adaptive gaming part. So it does actually have a, a little uh, tutorial that helps you out a lot. That's just really good. It would be nice if it had some more videos or something that shows you how to do it or walk you through to do it to explain it. But the, the main, my main gripe for it is, is uh, it doesn't, they advertise it with the Cooler Master set up there that uh, has the uh, all-in-one uh, chair with the uh, D-Box hooked up into it. And it's like it's quick plug and play kind of system. Uh, it's not that quick and plug and play. Uh, as far It's plug and play, but it, you literally plug it in, you can play. But uh, if the settings aren't pre-set up for you, you have to go through the trouble of doing that. So I don't imagine they have a different software program for just that. Maybe they do. I could be wrong. If you have one of those shares, let me know. But uh, it's probably the same software as what I would imagine. But it's not very intuitive as far as uh, figuring out how to use a gamepad for it. So keyboard and mouse, super easy. All the videos I've seen, are, they're using keyboard and mouse for it uh, for gameplay. But a lot, a lot of days, a lot of times nowadays, people use uh, controllers as well. So all right, uh, let me see. Uh, 
No motion compensation for VR. That's a big one for me. I get their point where uh, uh, it's, it's more realistic to have that jolting feeling of, of your eyes trying to focus on the road because your car is bouncing you around so much. And I've been in situations like that in a vehicle. Uh, but, you know, it's a game at the end of the day. <laughs> so I would like to have some motion or at least the option of motion compensation. That would be really good. Uh, let's see. Uh, the UI needs a severe overhaul. For my uh, point of view, uh, I shouldn't be. I, I get downloading two two packages of all these all these programs. That's fine, but give me one app to open up and it looks at each one of those. How hard is that, right? You've been doing this thing for 25 years. How come this has not evolved further? So that I don't get. Uh, and then uh, the default brackets, I, they're not very confident inspiring. I haven't had it in person, but I've seen them on like Boosted Media and stuff that used them and then other places. And they're, they look lackluster and weak to me. So I would definitely uh, recommend that you get someone like ASR brackets or, or uh, Track Racer brackets, something that's more substantial and sturdy uh, for this rig. So, all right, uh, that's all the uh, cons I have uh, listed for now. Nexus final thoughts. Okay, so we're in the last stretch here. We're gonna go over final thoughts and then uh, you, you, you have it all now to make a sound decision. Hopefully uh, I've, I've helped you through this video. Sorry it's long, but it's a lot to cover in this and it's an expensive system. So it warrants to have full coverage of the whole system. Like VR, you do need to get some of your motion legs into place. You are moving your whole rig and your whole body all at one time. Uh, it's not as natural feeling as when you go get in your vehicle and drive because you're, when you're holding a steering wheel and stuff and you're pushing the gas and stuff. For some reason, I guess because you're in, in your room, right? Uh, it's, you know, it's very immersive, but you do have a little bit of the motion motion legs that you need to. You got to get your motion legs in because I've I've hopped off of it and be like, okay, I'm a little disorientated, right? After after some, especially in the very initial setups of running this rig when it was set to like full motion. I think 40% and stuff, which was uh, quite uh, quite a lot, and uh, but that wasn't too over over the top. It actually worked really well once I thought about it. But yeah, it, and, and tried it in different sims, it worked good. Like the rally racing, it seems more logical at that at that level. Uh, but yeah, uh, another thing is is uh, uh, I was surprised. I was wondering about stationary monitors. You know, the, the, being a stationary monitors, am I going to feel disconnected with that? But no, I don't. It's just thinking of you riding along in your car with your windshield uh, wrapped around you, right, or in front of you, and and the, the world is looks static and, and staying in one place to you as you're traveling down the road. So same thing, was an immersion break, and I definitely wouldn't recommend you put all your monitors on your rig and have to move that around. Not triples at least. Uh, single monitor, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I could see that for condensing space and stuff for a single monitor, but triple monitors, it's a a lot of extra weight and then once you decide you want to go with a bezel kit bezel free kit or something like that you're just going to bounce it off right but uh keep in mind when you do your monitors i don't know of any monitor that is made to handle high vibrations like this especially from a haptic system such as this so uh you, your uh mileage may vary when you mount your monitors to a motion rig compared to a static rig so keep that in mind does it make you fast i have that on here no and yes uh <laughs> No, at first, no, because you're trying to learn a system. It's a little disorientating to be moving because you're not used to moving, right? But after you get it dialed in and you're like, okay, let me think about this in a logical way. How will a car actually, how do I feel in my regular car that I drive down the road? You know, And then try to implement that knowledge of the movement and stuff. And then some cars will be a little different. A lot of wheel hop, like front wheel drives, you feel the wheel hop in the front, which is so cool. Uh, and then the rear wheel drive, just the wheel hop in the back when you're spinning it up. And then of course it tilts you back of, of the acceleration. So, so immersive and, and engaging to have these uh, effects. But uh, yeah, you uh, it makes you faster. So after you get past the initial hump, uh, you do get faster, I believe. Uh, I don't see why you wouldn't get faster because it is replicating more what a real car does. Uh, you will now understand why your car is pushing more in a curve. You'll understand why your rear end got upset uh, when you hit some bumps that you didn't see uh, and that you certainly didn't feel in your in your direct drive wheel or your regular wheel, wheel driven or cog driven, however wheel uh, you have, right? Uh, 
what that doesn't pick up, your emotion will pick up and it'll translate to you and you'll get better of what to miss and what not to miss. Uh, example, going down the rally roads and you see the, the divot in the road, you can physically see it, you're like, well, I'm gonna kind of veer and straddle it, right? Because I know the motion's gonna kind of throw me around and upset my car. That's easy to identify, but there's other instances where you don't, you don't see it in just slight little bumps uh, that will upset your, your suspension, and uh, you'll know why now, because uh, motion will translate that to you. So to me, uh, when you have awareness of what all four corners of your car is doing, I am better prepared uh, to get down that track. Tracks don't change that much except for lap after lap. It starts getting uh, from green to hot track and uh, you'll feel that traction pick up through your wheel and stuff, right? But uh, the geometry of the track pretty much stays the same. Uh, so you'll learn where the good, good lines are quicker and where they're not, right? So uh, to me, immersion will absolutely make you faster uh, as long as you use it to tell you the story of what's going on, not to make it a roller coaster ride. Immersion, this is another awesome thing. This is like I'm talking about, this is all about immersion. This is the highest immersive feeling that you can get, at least in a 3 dof uh, As far as what you're used to, you're used to a static rig, you go to a 3 dof uh, rig, it is very immersive and engaging and you'll probably absolutely love it. Why do you have a direct drive wheel? Because you want to feel more of the road, right? This just goes up to the next level, feeling more of the road feeling more of what your car is actually doing so uh haptics 100 uh they are spot on exact very powerful and very subtle when you need them but each actuator is distinguishable with the haptics in other words you can feel the difference between engine rpm and and rumble strips it's even though they're both going on at the same time and uh, so it's very distinctive. It doesn't overpower. One effect doesn't overpower the next effect. I really love that. That is something with other transducers and stuff, you can easily overpower it, but it seems separated. Uh, the only one that can muddy it up, I think a little bit, is the uh, engine vibrations. You could, some cars you can feel such, so much engine vibration if you turn it up uh, quite loud uh, that you might not feel Summit, not the road strip rumbles, you'll feel them no matter what because they're just so distinctive. But some of the uh, like skipping across uh, front tire skipping or sliding and stuff, you might get that confused with with uh, with the engine RPM. I'm very uh, in tune with what feels what. I'm an old car guy, and uh, so it's when a car makes a certain noise, I'm wondering, okay, what the hell is this? Or I hear it automatically, and no one else in the car hears it, you know. And it may be someone tapping their foot on something, and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> so, but so I'm in tune with things. Some are more sensitive than others. Obviously, I, I get that. But yeah, very good. So um, some examples of immersions. Uh, you know, I gave you lots of examples. But traction loss for the front and rear is a really cool effect on here. Uh, between the motion itself drawing you back, and then of course haptics of the wheel hop bouncing up and down whether it's on the back end or front end. Uh, the independent suspension, amazing. You feel every 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 bump and crack on each each suspension and stuff. Obviously you're traveling very fast, so it happens like that. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I also like the uh, the dive effect you get when you're when you're downshifting through a gear like in, in rally racing and you feel the transmission pulling you down each each downshift. Uh, it's, it's so cool to feel that in the motion. There's like a boom and then boom and it, it just it adds to that immersion. It is mm, so good. It's fun. Uh, but yeah, uh, also of course vibrations, engines. I love that. You know, you got a V8 car. You're sitting here. It's like it's just really cool. It picks up the individual engines uh, from each car, so it's not like you have to. Uh, change the wavelengths of, of anything to get it to feel a certain way. Uh, you, you can actually pick, you know, like the four cylinder, eight cylinder, or whatever. But if you set it to automatic, I haven't had any problems with it. It, it picks up what would be logical to you. So, really cool. I like it. Uh, let's see. Crashing is it's more fun than it's ever been on it. It's very surprising to get 
sideswiped by someone and, and jarring effect. And I see why you can add that little uh, delayed effect of immersion to turn it down so it's not so like scared of crap out of you when you're, when you're just concentrating and someone hits your back end and then you let go of the wheel and you're like screwed. Or sometimes when you just get hit and it moves you over in the lane, it is so cool <laughs> to get slammed into with, with this motion. So again, it's independent like suspension. So you feel everything where you're supposed to feel it, which is really cool. On the uh, my final thoughts on this, I do, if you're looking to go to a, a uh, next level in your sim racing, uh, I think D-Box is a, a hard consideration, uh, especially the Gen 5, because it's very compact. If you're looking for something that's very compact, getting rid of all these wires and amps from transducers and have it all built into one just sleek looking system, this is really good system. I, I'm happy that I have this system. So it doesn't really, uh, I'm always looking for more, right? We all are uh, and wondering if one is better than the other. Maybe they are, maybe they're not, I don't know. Uh, but I know you depend on um, people that review these products and giving you some honest feedback. So I'm as transparent as I can be with this review. So hopefully it's, it's helped you along the way. So I said something that helps you uh, make your decision whether to get it or don't get it. But anyway, leave some comments below uh in below ask your questions i'll try to answer your questions as quickly as i can i, I read pretty much all my comments and uh yeah share and uh subscribe and all that stuff if you want to if you don't whatever no matter and uh so yeah i'll see you on the track i'm out